Welcome to Block Blaze. I'm Madeleine Carlson, I'm an Apple, and I'm addicted to Lego. Like most people, I played with Lego when I was a little girl. Uh, we didn't have very big sets, uh, but one thing that I can particularly remember is that um, in our congregation there were people that had much more money than us, and they bought a lot of Lego. Uh, for their children. So every alternative weekend I went there and rebuilt the sets that I have and every other weekend when I went there I break it and built my own stuff. Now at uh, one stage um, I uh, stopped collecting. I suppose it is because uh, one thinks you become too old and uh, that thing actually was always at the back of my head you know that the Lego is really a fantastic toy. Now I love toys in general um, and many years later that was now about three years ago and I was already over 50 then I happened to pass uh, a Lego shop and I thought maybe I must just go in here and have a look you know if this toy is still so awesome than it used to be what I can remember it was I don't see myself as a Lego collector um, I have a lot of respect for people that uh, buy a lot of sets, you know, and then build it and exhibit it in their houses and so on. I mainly buy sets so that I uh, can build them because I want to learn from the Lego designers to see how they construct certain things to get things, you know, to look a certain way. But mostly I'm a builder. I buy sets so that I can have my bricks so that I can actually build my own stuff. Now, um, since it's only been three years, in the past, before I joined the Cape Lug, um, I built things and I looked at it and I thought it was nice and then I broke it up without showing any, anyone. Um, and then at some stage I thought, no, but maybe I must really go and uh, see um, if there are not other people out there with the same passion. And I found online the, the, the details for the Cape Lug and uh, I applied for membership and then I went to the first meeting and on that specific day they had this competition where they build this thing that is called the mock. Now for me it was not very mocking but uh, eventually when I realized it is my own creation I thought oh okay um, so you can actually show what you can do here. So I decided to build my own first mock to display or to, to show other people and the theme for this specific one is that you had to choose one specific minifigure that is your main minifigure and you must build this whole thing around that. Now um, I actually eventually afterwards I, I added another minifigure because in my head the story contained two minifigures. Now this one is called the Queen of the Night. Now, I just love opera and the Queen of the Night opera is one of my favorite uh, arias. And many years ago I visited a well-known opera singer and she used to stay in one of these fancy penthouses in the top of uh, New York. And that picture stayed in my head. Now she was not evil, but the Queen of the Night sounded like something very evil. And in my head I started with this story. Now I never think of what I'm going to build exactly or how it is going to look until that moment that I sit in front of the bricks and I'm one of those people I take my loose bricks and I throw everything on the table so I don't plan it I don't design it it's all in my head and then I start from the beginning and I build start to build the story that is in my head. Now, I used to be also in, in broadcasting, in television and film and so on. I was a model builder. So model building is not something totally new to me. And uh, in this specific case, I wanted to create something that is also have a, a secondary story. Now, um, I'm very passionate about this pinky brain thing where they say what are we going to do tonight and that's taking over the world and I decided that I'm going to use that as a theme that will cut right through all my uh, mocks. Now in this specific case this queen of the night here she took over the real king and queen and she killed them, their uh, siblings and so on, so that she could become the real queen. Now she's got all these memorabilia of the heads. Now that's the heads of the minifigures and so on. And uh, yeah, well, she's on her way here to kill yet another one. 
In this case, it is poor Madame Butterfly that she thought is also maybe part of the family there. What is very important for me is to also not just do the story, but show that you can actually use the elements to do things like architecture and so on. Another thing that I do like when it comes to Lego is building movable models. Now, anything that can be made into something that move, I try to make it move. But one of my favorite models is this drawing machine. It's fairly easy to build. You can get your plans in the, on the internet. Now, any child from age seven or eight can start building this. Getting the plans, getting all your parts together. Because this not only teaches you the basics of engineering, um, it teaches you how to be creative. Now, in the past, STEM uh, training used to be a big thing. These days, STEAM training is a big thing because they brought in eventually art in it as well. Now, very close to my heart is to, to tell children on how uh, they can get into robotics and uh, using Lego to do that. Because we all, actually not only children, uh, we all like to play. And uh, using Lego is uh, the ideal way to play um, and to learn. Now, my favorite robotic um, systems currently in Lego is the Boost and also the Power Up systems because those little things are so powerful. And um, at one stage, uh, I would really like to go full time into teaching children um, how to use uh, Lego to learn robotics. Uh, because the, the programming language, Scratch, is, fa is fairly easy and nothing is stopping you, as I said, being a, 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 an adult to also learn this. Um, I learned my first programming la language when I was already an adult using Scratch and from there on I became so interested in it and in uh, front-end development and um, it just grew you know, from that first time that I decided that I would like to to, to build these things. My absolute favorite model here is also with the same theme, taking over the world. Now we humans have this fear that, that robots are going to take over. And in this model, I just wanted to grow with that specific theme. Now in here, I've got this robot here, creating other robots. But uh, at one stage, they realized they have to put some humanity into the robots. So they captured a few people and they started creating robots from them. This is one of the humanoid uh, robots that this robot is trying to create. Um, he used some human parts here, added some robotic parts and it is named um, in the image of the creator because he is actually creating things that look like him. Um, Many years ago, when I used to work in television, I worked with uh, various puppet makers. And one thing I picked up is that all these puppets always had some features from their creators. And that is one of the images that I kept in my mind. And when I started creating this, I took that part and built it in here. Now, just to get that steampunky, gothic feeling, I decided to built with grey, but also because of the theme. Now, at some stage, there was this lovely minifigure that is a, a gargoyle, and um, I thought of using these to create like this old Gothic uh, cathedral-like rooms into which I could put this. Now, here is a little room where they start off creating from the, the specific human parts and adding now computer parts to them and uh, trying to make some computers out of them. I don't know what the future holds. Um, currently, we humans try to build uh, computers to do our jobs. I don't know if the computers or the robots wanted to build humanoids so that they can do their jobs. Now it's me, Madeleine Carlson, signing off. Thank you for watching. I hope you like what you've seen. Now like us, subscribe, and till next time, see you.